Gremlins, internet gremlins, no fire drill. Uh, we've just talked predictions. Casper Hull, um, it's all over basically. The top five will be sorted, we think, but basically sorted tonight if Hull beat Castleford. Um, what do you think? Are you going Casper? It's, it's a difficult one. I, I think I'll go up with Hull advantage. And, uh, can't split these teams whatsoever. It's going to be a, an interesting game on Sky. Let's. Uh, who's Hull's last game? Uh, it's, it's do or die, isn't it, for, for Castle yeah. tonight? So I think that's the reason why I'm, I'm backing the Tigers. Uh, I think Hull have got Saints next week at home. But Saints will rest players, surely. Castle have got a window away, which is a. The week before the playoffs, Saints will surely rest players. Interesting, so the other five games in Super League are tomorrow night. The big game at the bottom, Hull KR against London. London basically down, aren't they, if they lose this week? Um, mainly because of the points difference. Um, a win a win for London, basically, well, it opens it all up again, doesn't it? It does. Um, uh, just, I still think London are going to go. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I fancy Hull KR to beat London tomorrow. Leeds Salford. Um, Leeds, big win for them last week over London Broncos, um, has got them safe basically. Um, they Leeds play Salford and Warrington last two, and of course Salford, Salford and Warrington. Salford needs to win to secure, or not? Um, well, yeah, they will. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Salford needs to get a win. You'd imagine one win out of the two will be enough for Salford um, to make the five. Le- Leeds don't really have anything to play for now, do they? No. It's all but done for Leeds. Yeah, uh, I think. I mean, the, I the, the, the thing is, is obviously, Salford. it depends what happens tonight because if if all beat Casper tonight. You know the top five's done pretty much because Salford aren't going to surrender. You know that many points. Well, they've got a hundred points difference on Casper. They're not going to surrender that in two games. You wouldn't imagine. Um, I don't know. I, I still think I think Salford will be too good for Leeds. Saints Huddersfield. Um, Saints obviously in this peculiar sort of period where they've yeah. had, uh, they're in the middle of a load of meaningless games. They lost the cup final. Huddersfield. Have, but you still sort of need a win to, to make it's, sure. Saints are very good at home, more they've not lost at home all season. I can only see one winner in this game. Yeah. Warrington, Wakefield, Warrington need to get a bit of form back from somewhere. And if you go into Warrington, you get a free Blake. A Cadbury Blake. Free car on it. Out there. They must have known I was going, you see. Um, I think Warrington home advantage there. Wigan, oh, Wigan Catalan, you think Wigan as well? Um, Wigan, to, Wigan will perhaps Catalan. Wigan. Wigan pretty much will have second place in the bag if they win. Yeah. Um. I mean, well, I mean, well, I say that maybe I'm a bit premature with that because I suppose they could lose their last game. They because got that's the way that. No, they got Casper at home. At home. So Wigan have got Casper at home last game. Um. Points they so they'd have to lose. They'd have to lose against Casper and then Warrington and Salford would have to win both of their games. So. Dislodge Wigan, but I mean, what an achievement for Wigan to if they do finish second to go from mm. the first few months of the season, the, the sort of turmoil that they had to turn that around and get up to second place. I mean, yeah, they've been out by the most ridiculous collapse by Warrington. What's that eight in ten they've yeah. now lost? Yeah. Absolutely diabolical form from Warrington, it has to be said. Um, and I mean that's why Warrington really need to get back on the horse. They need to get back on the horse against Wakefield and Leeds in the next two games to, to at least give them some sort of platform for the playoffs. Well, um, Blake Austin will be a big. Do you think they're, are they bringing it back too early? I don't know, but if you think about it, Wakefield at home, that's a kind of fiction yeah. you bring it back. Well, even even if you just play for twenty two times, yeah, I suppose. I mean, again, I, I wonder whether what happens at but at Casper tonight will impact on what happens with Blake Austin because if um, if Hull win top five score because you don't get Warrington still mm. may need to win games to get into the playoffs uh, you know because if Casper win this week and then Casper win next week and Hull win next week and Salford win one of their two Warrington are going to have to win one um, you know and obviously they've lost eight out of twelve uh, eight out of ten so um, it's by all means not guaranteed. Uh, so yeah, so they're Friday's games. Um, championship this weekend. There's two games on Saturday, which is Featherstone against Toulouse, Toronto against Lee. Uh, the Sunday games are Barrow against Batley, Dewsbury against Widnes, Halifax against York, Rochdale against Bradford, and Swinton against Sheffield. Um, not a great deal to sort out in the championship. Barrow and Rochdale are both relegated. Toronto, of course, guaranteed top spot it's the makeup of the playoffs that's going to be decided this week so you've got Toulouse on 38 
York on 37, Lee on 36, and Featherstone on 34. Um, York's win over Lee last week was massive because that's basically got them, you know, it's in their hands whether they finish in the top three. Mm -hmm. Featherstone played to lose. If Featherstone win, they can go above Lee, assuming Lee lose to Toronto, which would be good for them. It's all just um, a joke, isn't it? Well, I mean, the, you know, York, York are at Halifax away, so, you know, I think York are probably looking at it thinking, if Everston turn over to lose and York beat Halifax, York will finish second, which would be a phenomenal achievement, and then you're looking at, uh, you'd be looking at second York, third to lose, fourth Everston, fifth Lee. That's your potential. Um, I think Toulouse will probably beat Featherstone, um, yeah. and you'll have Toulouse second, probably York third, probably Lee, and then Lee fourth, Featherstone fifth, and then that means in the first week of the playoffs you'll have Toulouse against York, and then the winner of that, yeah, the winner of that goes to play Toronto away, but potentially for the first about two times in the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, all playoffs, championship playoffs start next week then. Um, the League One title can be decided on Saturday. Whitehaven just need a point, I think. They're away at Coventry. Let's just have a quick look at the table. That's in the last Bob game. says the volume's quite low, Jim. Can't get the staff. Get the staff. Um, Whitehaven need a point to secure the League One title. They're away at Coventry on Saturday. North Wales take on London Scholars with nothing to play for there. Although, having said that, London Scholars, if London Scholars beat North Wales, they'll finish above North Wales in the table. So that's a, a little something to play for there. The other League One games, Hulslet against Oldham. Oldham still trying to secure second place. They could, of course, still win the league if Whitehaven lose. Um, Hunslet, I think, Hunslet are pretty, well, they could be, they could move down to fifth in the table, I suppose. Um, Keithley, Newcastle, Workers in Doncaster. The format of the League One is slightly different. Um, well, it's not different, it's just that the teams are second to sixth rather than first to fifth because the top team gets an automatic slot. Whitehaven, I mean, you can't see. Yeah, Newcastle. Coventry have won four games all season. It's very unlikely that Whitehaven, who've only lost three all season, are going to go to Coventry and get turned over. Um, we've, got, we've got one more comment from uh, Grant Re uh, Well, Don says the volume's low. Louis says, Shame Super League have not realised the value. In not relegating the team this year and expanding to 14. Uh, Grant Bean also says, Will you miss Odsall? I, I, I will miss Odsall. Mm. We were only saying the other day, even though it's. Uh, yeah, even though it's, it's old. It's, 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 not, not it's, it's a unique it's, ground, isn't it? It's an iconic ground. Iconic rugby league ground. It really is. Uh, I've always enjoyed going there, whether it be as a fan or as a reporter. Um, it's, you just. Well, when you're in Odsall, it captures. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like there's nothing else going on yeah. in the world because obviously you're in a bowl, aren't you? And you can't see it any, yeah. any rest of the world. I like the burger stand and I like the, the sweet stall as well. That's oh, well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's an interesting point about the Super League expansion because obviously it expanded. And, and I completely agree with that sort of comment because we talk about expansion all the time. And I've said this before. When Super League started in 1996, there was 12 teams. And here we are, what is it, 23 years later, and there's still 12 teams. Mm. And it's like, well, you know, you can expand all you want, but you're not expanding, you're just moving one team somewhere else. So yeah, I think if you looked at it and thought, well, actually, if Toronto, if Toronto and Toulouse or Toronto and York came up into Super League, would that be such a bad thing? You know, I, I, you know, I, my, I, I dread to put my opinion on, on camera of, of what, what would be the best for Super League to happen. But I think it would be, you could get rid of the loop pictures if you had 14, and, and all of a sudden, yeah, you, you know, instead of playing, Instead of having Wigan and Warrington playing three times, they only play each other home and away, and then you know you're playing Toronto home and away as well. Yeah, I uh, I agree for expanding the league, but uh, I'm it's all about money. We're talking about structures. Yeah. Year. Well, on that note, it's the end of the rugby league lunch. I'm sorry we had a couple of technical gremlins, which meant we had to split it into two parts. And um, thanks as always to our partners at Betfred for their sponsorship. Please do keep it with believe Someone in the office is going to have to figure out how to merge these videos for release on the podcast. Um, but come back next week, 12 o'clock, for the Rugby League lunch hour. We'll see you then.